Hey everyone, it's Christian and today we're diving into an epic showdown between two very powerful free and open source Git platforms, the community edition of GitLab versus the community edition of Git T. I've recently created two tutorial videos exploring these platforms and I've been testing them for quite a while now in my home lab. And just to get this right out of the way, so no matter what platform you will like more, I think both are really fantastic solutions. Of course, they have their pros and cons, like uh, one of the main issues of GitLab I've mentioned in the previous videos was that it just consumes far too many resources, sometimes over six GB of memory, a lot of CPU power, and Gitty is just much more efficient. But also, GitLab, on the other hand, comes with more features. Some are actually features that I personally don't want to miss anymore in my home lab. So that's why I thought, let's go in a bit more more detail on what exactly are these specific features that I like so much about GitLab, but also be honest about the downsides. I hope this video will help you to decide which team you want to be on, Team Orange or Team Green. All right, so let's kick off things with talking about the history of both platforms and their licensing. I'll start with GitLab. So this platform already began its journey back in 2011 as a small open source project, but quickly evolved into a massive DevOps platform. Since 2013, GitLab also offers an enterprise edition for advanced users alongside its popular cloud offering GitLab.com, which always was a great and beloved alternative to GitHub, for example, and I believe it is still today. The funny thing, I remember the times when GitHub wanted you to pay for creating private repositories, which is insane if you think about it today, but it was actually a paid feature in the past, and there GitLab was a great alternative to GitHub since it always had free private repositories in the cloud. But even if you are not into cloud services anyway, so if you don't want to use GitLab Cloud or GitHub, the community edition of GitLab is a nice alternative to that because it allows you to run a powerful open source version of this massive platform with a core set of features and functionalities in your own self-hosted environment. Of course, it doesn't have everything that is included in the enterprise or cloud edition, but it objectively is a huge package you get entirely for free with a lot of unique capabilities that other platforms don't really have. And that's also the reason why I personally still use it in my home lab even if it requires more resources, but more about these things here in a minute. Let's come to Git T, which is a younger platform than GitLab that was forked from a different project back in 2016. It also started as a small open source project, but just like GitLab, it also evolved into something bigger. And since 2022, Git T also now started under a new organization called Commit Go that is founded by the creators of Git T, by the way, their own enterprise and cloud service offering to advanced users. This seems to be a pattern in tech that actually happened to many software projects these days. They start as small open source projects and gain a lot of popularity and then they suddenly turn into something bigger with proprietary features and a subscription model. But yeah, let's not get too much into this topic. Of course, I know about forks like the 4Geo project and stuff. We'll see what will happen to this one, by the way. I think it's still too early to say. But my own and honest opinion on this topic is I don't have anything against cloud services or proprietary software in general. I I totally get why companies want to make money with their services they invested a lot of time and resources in. And if it offers great value to us tech people, why not? But of course, I still prefer self-hosting applications in my home lab where you have a better control over the infrastructure or it gives you more privacy and you can also learn a lot from setting up and maintaining these things. And since both platforms, GitLab and Git T, have a community edition besides their enterprise and cloud version, I think this is just great for everybody because it means there are a lot of enterprise customers that pay for developing new features and sometimes these are ported back into the community versions that we can all benefit benefit from. So as I can see, the GitLab and GitT licensing and also the service offering nowadays are very similar to each other. No big difference here anymore. And by the way, if you care about privacy, which I believe you do if you're interested in self-hosting, you will know the problem with personal data collection online and the potential risk associated with it, such as information leaks, spam emails, phishing attacks, or targeted scams. This is all done by data brokers. Yeah, They collect and sell all your personal information. I'm pretty sure we all know how this game works, but it doesn't mean that we have to accept this. We have the right to request the deletion of our data. However, 
as you can imagine, this is a pretty time consuming and annoying challenge to reach out to each and every data broker yourself. And that's why you definitely should use Incogni, the sponsor of today's video. Incogni will reach out to all of these data brokers on your behalf, request the removal of your personal data immediately and even fight any objections for you. Everything is fully automated and it is super simple. I've been using Incogni for more than half a year now and I think the results speak for themselves. Most of my removal requests have already been completed now and Incogni is even constantly processing repeated removal requests. All you have to do is to sign up with an account, enter the information that you want to be removed and give Incogni the right to work on your behalf, then you can sit back and relax. <laughs> By the way, you can log into your account at any time to check the progress and get more details about all these data brokers that have your information and also the status of your removal request. So definitely check it out. Use my code Christian Lempa at the link in the description box down below and get a 60% discount to an annual Incogni plan. All right, so now let's get back to GitLab versus GitT and discuss some of the things they don't have in common. What I already mentioned are the massive resource requirements GitLab has, but on the other hand, it also has more advanced features. But what actually are these features? Well, sometimes they are just the smaller things that GitLab does a bit better. Like if you're raising an issue in GitLab, you can directly create a branch from that issue that is then linked to it. So that means if you're working on that branch, you commit your code and merge it into the main branch. The issue that is linked to that branch is automatically closed, which makes my workflow a lot easier because I'm always merging code fixes by using additional branches and issue tracking. But when I'm speaking about advanced features, I primarily mean the recent updates GitLab has done on their security side. For example, even in their free and self-hosted tier of GitLab, they already give you some very powerful capabilities that enhance the security of your projects. Like GitLab SAST, which stands for Static Application Security Testing, that can scan your code projects and notify you about any vulnerabilities, which supports a ton of programming languages and is super useful. The same is also existing for containers and because you know I love to deploy things in containers and keeping my infrastructure secure this is really a big plus for the GitLab platform and what it currently has to offer. Also what is pretty nice GitLab has a secret detection feature so you can scan your code for any credentials like API keys or SSH keys you accidentally pushed to your repositories and they also have an infrastructure as code scanner that supports Ansible, Docker, Kubernetes, Terraform and a few others, so all the technologies that we love to use. I haven't really played around with this yet, but I definitely will because it sounds like another great built-in security feature. And oh, by the way, just because I'm mentioning Terraform here, GitLab also has a built-in Terraform state file backend, which I absolutely love to use in my home lab because as you might know, I like Terraform, <laughs> but I don't like to depend on Terraform Cloud for storing state files of my personal projects. That's the HashiCorp plan of keeping you into their own ecosystem. And that's why I'm using the Salesforce GitLab instance. I've, by the way, also made a video about this topic where I have explained it in a bit more detail. So what the Terraform state file is and how storing it on a backend helps you to work from multiple computers on a single Terraform project. So if you want to learn more about this, I will leave you a link in the description box down below. But it doesn't really end here. I also encountered a couple of other smaller limitations with third-party integrations in Git T. I know that Git T also has many nice integration options as well. But the truth is, when it comes to third-party integrations, then most vendors tend to support just the most common platforms, which usually are the big ones, like in our case of a VCS, that is GitHub, GitLab, maybe Bitbucket, and yeah, that's it. And just to show you a practical example of what that could mean, when I wanted to deploy the community edition of Renault for instance, which is a super useful tool that I don't want to miss anymore in my home lab. This only supports GitHub, Bitbucket and GitLab. At least that's the current status. So when I want to use the self-hosted Renovate Community Edition for my home lab projects, I just have to use GitLab, there's no other choice. I know all these features might not be relevant to everybody, so this is a very personal list of things I care about, I know this, but I think if you're interested in some of these advanced features and workflows and you want to learn DevOps processes, then GitLab is objectively the better choice. And although GitT is definitely working very hard to keep up with GitLab and they are constantly pumping out more features into their releases, like they recently added a package registry 
GUI with container support or label templates for issue and project tracking. So very professional features that a modern DevOps platform needs. But honestly, GitLab just seems to have a few more resources and maybe more experience because it's just longer around in that field and therefore it is a bit ahead in the game of features. However, that also comes at a price and I think we also need to talk about this because there are obviously reasons why someone would want to pick a smaller and simpler platform like Git T over GitLab, especially when you're self-hosting it. The problem with GitLab is that it just has a much more complicated architecture than Git T. It is mostly written in Ruby, but also has some other components written in Go and JavaScript. It is just a massive project and that's why people constantly seem to find new security vulnerabilities in the GitLab code and also the configuration is much more difficult. I mean just look at the official documentation page of the GitLab architecture. It is confusing how things actually work inside GitLab with all these different different components, the omnibus packages, the different versions of it. At least to me, it seems confusing. Yeah, maybe it totally makes sense for developers, but you can definitely see why GitLab requires all these heavy resources on your machine. It is just a massive overkill by design. And perhaps this is awesome for building a robust, flexible and scalable enterprise platform, but for running it in a self-hosted environment, it doesn't make things easier. So Git T on the other hand feels much simpler when you look at the code base. It is written in Go, which is a blazing fast modern programming language. And this is also the reason why it requires just a fraction of the CPU and memory resources compared to GitLab. And a big advantage of this simpler architecture is that you also can configure it very easily using environment variables in the compose uh, file if you're using Docker or just changing simple settings in a single .ini config file. So all of these things make Git just much, much easier to maintain in a self-hosted environment. And it is also great as a beginner-friendly option into the amazing world of distributed version control systems. Anyway, I'm still running both platforms beside each other on the same server for now as I want to keep using my GitLab instance because of all of these amazing features it has. But I'll definitely keep an eye on Git and how it evolves in the future. Also about the 4Geo project, maybe that's a topic for an upcoming video. And if I could submit a wish list for new features I would love to see in Git I would add basic security features such as container or code scanning and also the possibility to manage Terraform state files. And if the Renovate Community Edition starts supporting Git at some point, I probably would migrate over to it because generally I like to use more lightweight solutions if they do everything I need. But at least for now, that's not the case. I just have too many features I would miss from GitLab. So that's why I personally will continue using it as my main Git platform for now. But maybe your use case and priorities are totally different than mine. So that doesn't mean that GitLab is better than Git in any way. So if it does everything you need, then Git might be the better option. I still hope this video helped you to get a better understanding of the pros and cons of these platforms. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to check out my Patreon page. I'm constantly creating more free video tutorials for you. So any support helps me to keep doing this. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a nice rest of your day and I'm going to catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.